Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to install VirtualBox 7 on Linux and then create a Windows 11 virtual machine uh, within VirtualBox. So you'd be running your Windows 11 VM uh, within Linux. So uh, the process will vary, of course, depending on what version you're running, you know, version of Linux, that is, because, you know, there are different flavors kind of work differently. So um, if you want to do it via the Linux repository, software repository, you could run this command but that's only going to get you version 6, which is not going to work for Windows 11 because it doesn't have TPM support, even though you know, there's a way to do you know, kind of workarounds. But if you want to install uh, Windows 7, you're going to have to download it from the website. I'm not sure if they'll update the repository anytime soon, but I'm assuming they will. But as of right now, if you run this command, you're going to get version 6. So what you want to do is go to the VirtualBox website and go to the Linux downloads, and you can see you have various versions here. So I'm running Ubuntu 22, so I download this one, which I already have here. So all you need to do is just install it, like you would any other package. I'm just going to right-click on it, open it with a software install. Click on Install. Admin password here. Okay, so the installation will take a few minutes, so I'll either fast forward or pause it for this. Okay, so the installation is complete, so let's go ahead and open VirtualBox here. Okay, so we've got our interface here, so no virtual machine, so we're going to go click on the New button here. And we'll call this Win11. Actually, first, a um, couple ways you could do the guided mode or the expert mode. I'm going to do the expert mode because I like that better. So we'll call this Win11. And if you want to change the default installation or you know virtual machine file path, you could do that. Otherwise, it's going to put it into the username VirtualBox VMs. And then for ISO images, I have the uh, Windows 11 22H2 ISO file you could get from Microsoft. So I'll put a link in the, down, or link in the description for that. And I also have this one for no P TPM, which you could actually use for uh, version 6. Uh, so I'll put a link in the description on how you could create a uh, Windows 11 ISO file that bypasses the TPM if you want to use uh, VirtualBox 6. Okay, so let's browse to this. Okay, so it reads it as Windows 11. So that's the thing with the VirtualBox 7. It does a better job at reading the ISO files so it knows what the OS is. So therefore, it's going to force the uh, TPM installation, which it'll actually do automatically for you because it'll detect it. So we're going to skip the unattended install, unattended install because that you could put in like the product key and that kind of stuff. And I haven't had much luck with that working too smoothly anyways. So let's go back and skip that. For hardware, since just demonstration, we'll leave it at 4 gigs, 2 processors. Hard disk, I'll just make this uh, 65, I think that's the minimum for Windows 11. And then here's your disk images, so if you're just going to be using VirtualBox, just use the VDI. Uh, if, you use, if you check pre-allocate file size or full size, that'll make it take up the whole 65 gigs instead of you know using it as needed, so I always leave that unchecked. And if you have an existing hard disk file, you could use that, or if you want to add to disk later, you could do that. So click on Finish. Okay, so now we have our VM configured, so we just need to start it up and start the uh, Windows installation. So since the ISO is mounted, we should be able to boot from it. Okay, press any key to boot from CD. Okay, so we have our Windows screen here. Click on Next. Install now. Okay, don't have a product key. You, know, you can run Windows 11 without a product key, just certain things they won't let you do. So we'll pick Windows 11 Home. You could pick whatever one you want from here, the list here, since they're all on the same ISO file here. Click on Next. Accept the agreement. Click on Next. We'll do Custom because we're not doing an upgrade. So we're going to use all the space here. You could, you know, use part of it if you want. So now it's going to copy the files and do the installation, so we'll pause and be back uh, when that's done. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now we're at the first uh, screen in the GUI here. So uh, if you've never installed Windows, it's pretty simple. It's just answering some questions about your location. About your uh, keyboard layout. And we're not going to add another layout. Then I'll check for some updates. Now it's going to want you to give a host name to your computer. You can do this later if you want, but if you don't do it now, it's just going to give it some generic name and you'll have to change it. Okay, so now you're going to need to sign in with your Microsoft account. And if you don't have one, you could create one. And you don't need to have a, like an Outlook email address for Microsoft account. You could create one with your you know, Gmail or whatever account. So I'm going to put in this user here. And then once you uh, create, you know, or use your Microsoft account to log in, uh, you could create a local account after that if you want to use that instead. Actually, have a video on how to do that if you want to check that out. Now, this section here, if you've used the same Microsoft account to log onto a different Windows computer, you could actually copy your settings over from that computer. Or if you have multiple computers, you could uh, find them on a list. Or if you just want to set it up as a new device, you could do this. So if this is your uh, first time logging in uh, with your new Microsoft account, then you're not going to get this option here. All right, now it wants you to create a pin, which you'll use to log in instead of your password. So you still have a password, but then you could just set up this pin for quick access. And then you could use letters and symbols if you don't want to use just numbers. All right, now I've got the privacy settings. I just turn all this stuff off because they don't need to know anything that they don't need to know. All right, I skipped this part for gaming and entertainment. Skip the part about setting up the phone, unless you want to do that, of course. But it's only for Android, not for iPhone. So that way you could kind of sync your phone and connect it and view your pictures and that sort of thing, phone calls. All right, we don't need the Game Pass. Checking for updates again. Now it's setting up your user account, so this takes a few minutes here. So I'll probably pause for this part. All right, so now we have our Windows desktop here, except uh, the re resolution recording in makes it kind of hard to see everything. So let me see if I can adjust it here. So you got your start menu, all your apps. And so on. And if we go back here, we have it running here, then you could just add additional VMs as uh, needed, assuming you have the uh, hardware to support them or to run them all, and you should be good to go. So I'll put uh, as many links in the description, you know, information to help you find what you need, then you could go ahead and install uh, VirtualBox 7 after downloading it, create your Windows 11 VM, and then you can start playing with Windows and Linux. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.